Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to a new episode of Last Claudia. As you can tell, we have a new unit to discuss, so let's go ahead and get right to it. Today we're going to be looking at Regal Bolt Lance Val. So, this is a character that I'm definitely hyped to see, and I'm glad I pulled him. Let's go ahead and go over what he has. Actually, the first thing I want to do is just comment on the fact that he actually looks similar to Ike from Fire Emblem Path of Radiance. Shout out to that game. That was one of the best games on the GameCube. Of course, a lot of people don't know about that, but we won't really go into deep into that. But yes, I am a huge Fire Emblem fan. So when I saw this, I was like, oof. But no, we don't have a Fire Emblem collab. All of that would be interesting. Interesting. Moving along, let's take a look at his stats. So Lancefell has uh, some good strength and defense. We're looking at 15, 14, and 12, 43, respectively. So overall, he's got some good stats. HP over 7,000, always a good thing. He's got resistances to three different attributes, which is always good to see. And he has resistance to three different ailments, uh, specifically blind, stun, and illness, which, uh, you know, is good to have. Taking a look at his actual skills, he's going to be a thunder base physical attacker, physical DPS. Uh, the main things to note is that his second skill gives you a plus 2,000 damage cap. His third skill gives you a plus 4,000 damage cap. And his special gives you a plus 10,000 damage cap. So it's scaling up pretty nice. Let's take a look at some of his traits. We have Take Mikazuchi. This says sword equip physical attack damage plus 40% damage cap plus 5,000. When only weapon equipped is one sword, enemy is more likely to faint. Break plus 200% physical attack damage plus 20% damage cap 15,000. So that was a lot. So basically, you're wanting to single wield and you're wanting to use a sword. That's basically what this is telling you. And you're getting a lot of these bonuses, lots of damage cap, uh, increased likelihood to faint the enemy and uh plus you know a large percentage to break so just really good all around this should be good for any kind of boss fights uh, i think this also helps him be good in arena uh so i'm looking forward to testing him there eventually let's take a look at the second trait brave general when using a skill can be interrupted by most attacks if attack during a skill, damage plus 150%, damage cap 20,000 for the next skill hit. Rage resist plus 2. If we to rage, gain rage resist. We haven't necessarily seen rage as a big mechanic, but I'm sure that that's going to be something special about him later in the future. Uh, basically, him having super armor is really good. Uh, very few characters could do this, like Baron, I believe, and, and Rowan. Uh, so, you know, again, he's going to be a powerhouse in Arena, uh, specifically just for the Super Honor by itself. Uh, but yeah, he's got a lot going on here. So, good traits, good for this character. So, let's go ahead and take a look at his actual skills. So, he starts with Attack Up Max, Fighting Spirit 4, Resolve Up 4. Advanced Aim Vitals, Royal Armor. So we're going to go ahead and stop right here real quick. So the fact that he has Advanced Aim Vitals is kind of a hint of a way that you can build him. Uh, I do believe the crit package is going to specifically be really, really good on him. Some of his abilities you'll see further down the line will kind of explain why. Let's go ahead and continue. Uh, we have uh, Royal Armor, we have Soldier Mastery. This is going to be new. So when unit has soldier type, strength plus 10%, damage, physical attacks are affected, effective against snipers, and then damage from snipers is minus 10%. So that's going to be kind of like a, a slayer plus a shield is basically what this is, specifically for the sniper type. Speaking of which, he has human shield, so that's pretty cool. Uh, auto crit, auto haste. Physical, oh sorry, by the way, there's another crit thing right here, so keep that in mind. Patience 2, Pride 2, so it backs HP strength plus 30%. So again, this is a clear indicator that you're going to want to use the crit package so that you can equip Proud Force so that you can top him off and keep his strength higher by keeping him at max HP. We have Gale Force, which at max HP, SCT recovery speed plus 10%. Again, 
the whole let's make sure he's at max HP. You want a crit build, you want to put Proud Force on him. So just wanted to bring that up there. At least that's how I'm building him. We have Thunder High Drive. We have Thunder Attack Race 3, which gives you a plus 30% damage and plus and damage cap plus 2000, specifically for Thunder. We have Thunder Critical Rays. We have Pirate's Feast. We have Goddess Kiss, Blessed Speed, Shockwave 2. So physical attacks have a chance to nullify enemy guard. Being that this person once used to be a tank, it kind of makes sense that he would have this because he would know how to deal with that. So pretty smart. Favorite sword, again, good for single wielding. Uh, Instant Strike, also good for single wielding. Sword boost, sword mega boost, some more damage cap. Sharp eyes, because why not? Uh, strategic point, this might be new. So physical attack and special damage cap plus 5,000 to enemies and break. Again, he's going to be a breaker, so he's basically giving you more damage when you get them to break. Speaking of which, he has a breaker. He also has ambition, which I believe is also new. When physically attacking enemies with more HP than the unit, physical attack damage plus 20%. Uh, this is mainly specifically for bosses, but I'm sure it has other implications as well. And then Sleeping Lion. So when close to death, very greatly restore HP. Increase movement speed, strength plus 100%, SCT recovery speed plus 50% once per wave. So this is kind of like an Awaken, but a bit stronger. I like it. And again, he's really good. He's got survivability. He has some things that basically give him bonuses when he has max hp which is why i highly recommend a crit build at least that's what i'm going to do uh, along with anything else that could either increase his damage like i don't know sword high boost uh thunder attack raise two stuff like that uh and that's he's going to be easy to build uh, straight up but overall this is a fantastic unit obviously he's the kind of unit that i would be into because i'm all about the single wield uh and he's just a good breaker and we don't have a lot of physical Thunder DPS units. We have a few, like Thunder Sevia. Uh, she's probably one of the more popular ones. Uh, Shift Alice can do some good Thunder damage. And then, of course, Jilukia with her special, uh, known for that specifically. So there's they're out there, but this is the only one that can do well on a single wheel front. So happy to see it. And yes, I do think that he's going to be very good in both boss fights and arena. And I'm looking forward to playing them in both. The art that we're going to be discussing is Bolt Bearer's Ascent. Now this I haven't pulled quite yet, but I like it too. So, the art trait. Thunder physical attack damage plus 20%. When using special, apply physical damage taken minus 30% buff to the unit. When equipped with only one weapon, physical attack damage cap 2000. So for any character that you're single wielding with, it doesn't necessarily have to be Lanceville. It could literally be a 2 or even Leona. You're getting yourself a damage cap, which is pretty nice. Now, should you use this arc for them? I would say probably not Leona and probably not Lanceville. Only because of the only arc... Well, we'll talk about Leona first. With Leona, I personally like Icy Guardian. I have a crit build on her. So I think that that would be a little bit better just because you're getting some uh, pursuit attack damage. So that's pretty good. And for Lanceville, I would probably use the UR Solaris just because it gives you more of a damage cap, if I'm not mistaken, and some defense for a short while. So this, I would say, I would probably only give to maybe A2. And I say maybe because we have a UR that... I use for her that might be a little bit better so it's it's debatable but otherwise it is still a decent arc again you know for any thunder attack unit it's going to be good and then of course you know getting that damage cap of 2000 is good if you don't have some of the other arcs that i mentioned as far as the skills that can be learned you have flying shadow sky high thunder drive which i'm not sure if this is new or not as far as on an actual arc skill i know that uh, some characters have it but i don't remember if it's on an arc it might be uh ultimate boost we've seen before dragon slayer we've seen before and chivalrous mindset so actually this looks like mostly skills that we already have somewhere else although i'm not sure so Silverous Mindset might be a new learnable skill, because I think only a few characters have it, like Rowan and, and Nightlord Kyle. So, 
Okay, nice to see if you want to go that route for sword and armor units. Uh, again, the, the things you can learn are okay. I would say the best thing on here is probably going to be Thunder Drive, in all honesty, everything else. And maybe Dragon Slayer, but that's about it. Um, Sky High if you're trying to do the whole, uh, you know, in the air damage, so that could be good too. The Arc Ether Reward is the Bravery Ra Raiment, so let's take a look. And this is a Cloth, Strength of 87, Defense of 160, Mind of 118. Physical attack damage taken, minus 12%, boost movement speed. So, this is okay. Uh, nothing really to get super excited about. It is a cloth that's giving you strength, which is always a decent bonus. And the defense and mind stats are actually decent as well. I mean, anytime you see your defense and your mind stat above, or in the triple digits, that's always a good thing. And like I said, the strength is just an added bonus. And then, again, it's a piece of cloth, so ideally you're trying to get a little bit of defense, which is what the, uh, what the trade does, and you're getting some movement speed. So again, overall, this is actually a decent cloth. It's nothing, like, worth bragging about. It's not, like, super broken, but it's actually not bad either. So this is, you know, a good piece of cloth to give to... You know, anyone, if you don't have, like, the God Forge cloth, or I think there might be one or two other cloths that might be slightly better, maybe. But this is still pretty good, though. I, I dig it. I approve. But overall, I think the, the arc is decent. Like I said, I, I did kind of talk my way out of, like, in the trait, just because with some of the characters that I single wield with, there are specific arcs that I use for them, but I still think that the trait is good. Uh, and it will work well with Lanceville if you don't have, like, Solaris. So, this is still good. It's a little fret over the trait. The skills are okay, and the, you know, the arc of the reward is also okay. This, like I said, I would consider this a mid-tier arc. It's a good arc, but it's not, like, super you know, broken or anything. But I think it's good, which is what an SSR needs to be. An SSR needs to be good. Not necessarily broken, but at least good. So it qualifies. And of course, the last thing that I have to discuss is the actual paid gear for Mr. Lanceville. Now, I actually went ahead and picked up 30 of these credentials so I can pick up one of these. Although now that I think about it, I have five more than I need to, so I may have screwed up somewhere. Either way, let's take a look and see what we have. So, we'll start with the weapon here. This is the Thundering Blade Zabold. So, <clears throat> the strength is 193. Defense is 17, so defense on a sword is interesting. Thunder attack damage cap 1500. That's already good by itself. Physical attack damage plus 10%. Okay, and then break plus 50%. So, overall, this is a good weapon. Like I said, the stats are decent. The damage cap plus physical damage plus increased break is actually a good combination for this specific unit. Like I said, I think it's good. And I would say that this might arguably be the best Thunder Sword. Because uh, I don't think we have many Thunder Swords to begin with. And what we have is... Probably not as good as this, to be honest. So I said I would say that this might be worth picking up. Let's take a look at the accessory. We have Tactician's Magic Eye Band. So Strength plus 56 and MP plus 30. Uh, critical Rate plus 5%. Special Damage plus 20%. Physical Attack Damage taken minus 10%. And you get resistance to both Blind and Stun, which means once you equip it, he'll actually be nil. To both of those so the accessory itself is also good mainly for the ailment resistance more than anything else the added strength is just a bit of a bonus and the added mp is you know again a bonus for the whole sharp eyes thing and if we're trying to go for like goddess kiss prox could be helpful i think actually the the strength will probably help with that uh but the heaven crit rate is good just because if you're doing the whole crit build this will help you out as well, which I recommend. The special damage is probably the least exciting thing, but I actually do appreciate that they thought about this, only because most characters don't do well with their specials. There's very, very few units whose special actually mean anything as far as for damage is concerned. I think the most obvious one is Alice being like having a fantastic special on both forms. 
So this showing that they actually are caring about getting him as much damage with the special as possible is actually a good thing, but that's not really why you want this. You want this really for the crit rate and for the resistance to stun and blind. Those are the main things you want here. Uh, the physical damage taken minus 10% is good, but again, nothing. it's just an added bonus. It's nothing really worth bragging about. Now the question is, which one of these two items am I going to pick up? Because uh, I'm going to do this a budget way. I don't, I don't plan on willing for this guy. Uh, since I do have him, I do want to pick up at least one thing, and it's going to be the sword. Uh, like I said, there's not many thunder swords. As a matter of fact, let's go ahead and take a look at what we have inventory for swords that are thunder based. Because you do want to use a thunder sword, and I already got this pretty much set up. So you have the twin blade, which has a, a lower strength, a little bit of HP, but regular attacks deal thunder extra damage. It's not bad, but not as good as the wep that weapon I already have. Uh, we can't use this, but this is for Alice. And then we have this here, which gives you less strength. Uh, when physically attacking with an opponent's weakness, you get an extra 10% damage. And this was good a long time ago, but compared to what Lancelot can use, it's not really that great in comparison. So, as you can tell, I'm going to go ahead and make the purchase for the sword. This is the item to buy if you're trying to be on a budget. Now, I'm not taking anything away from the accessory. I don't think the accessory is bad at all. I actually think it's good specifically for the crit rate because I would make the crit build and, of course, for the element resistances. So this is still good. But overall, I would rather have the sword, which is why I went ahead and purchased it. So overall, it's a good banner. You know what I mean? The, I actually like the unit. Obviously, I'm a single wheel person, so right up my alley. But yeah, he's good He's good for bosses. He's going to be good in arena, I'm sure. And, uh, you know, I'm just happy to see him. Uh, he also can deal optimally the most damage as a single wielder than any other single wielder. So he's he's basically a step above the rest, you know, of, above A2 and Leona. So that's always good to see. You know, got someone a little bit better. Uh, representing the Ike look, which I'm always cool with. And the arc that he comes with is decent too. So, you know, oh, again, a decent banner. So, I wouldn't go hard on it. I didn't. I was fortunate enough to get him after just one multi. Uh, I did the step up, didn't get him, but then I, then I did one paid multi and got him. And the only reason I'm doing paid multis was just to get one of his particular item, which was a sword. Uh, but yeah, I'm actually happy to see this. I'm super hype about it. Uh, thank you for creating another good single world unit. <clears throat> That's going to be all for this video. So until next time, keep gaming and take care, everyone. Later.